inside of us, permeating everything. Same God, different aspects of reality. So Shiva's that part of God that's in us. So self-realization is, is Shiva realization. God realization is Vishnu realization. Sometimes people get attached. Oh, but Vishnu, oh, but Shiva. There's no attachment. It's all one God. Taking on different, it's, it's only our perspective that changes. It's our perspective that changes. The divine doesn't change. But the, from the perspective of, from the Shiva perspective, it's that God that's inside of us, that is you. It's the Atma inside of you. So the Jyotir Lingam represents that light, which is the Atma inside of you. And that Atma is existing in a physical body. Now the universe is made of pure absolute consciousness, yet exists in material form. In the same way that the Atma exists in you, but yet in material form, the pure absolute consciousness exists in the universe, yet takes on the form of the universe. Your soul exists in you, yet taking on a physical body. So in the Shiva Lingam, it's in the Yoni representing Prakriti, the material creation. And the Shiva Lingam is representing the absolute consciousness permeating everything. Which also represents, because as above, so below. So you are also pure conscious Atma existing in you, yet that Yoni is your body. So the yoni is your body, the, the actual lingam is your atma. Okay? The whole universe is, it's the universe, the physical universe is the yoni, the creation. And the shiva lingam is that, the symbol of pure consciousness pervading everything. It's a cosmic egg, it's round, it has no sides, no end, no beginning. Now when we look at the signs, what created the signs? Why were they 30 degrees? The interaction of what? Time and space. Time and space and the sun and the moon. It was that, it was the sun is moving, the moon is going all the way around, that's a sign. The sun is moving, that's a sign. A sign. So that interaction of the sun and the moon creates each of the signs. So the signs are basically Shiva Lingam. They're an interaction of Purush and Prakriti. They're an interaction of the mother and the father. They're an interaction of Mana, the mind, and Atma, the soul. Sun and moon. Right? So that essence, this highest essence of the signs, the internal deepest core essence of the sign is the Jyotir Lingam. It's the interaction between Purush and Prakriti. It's the interaction between the sun and the moon. That's creating a Rashi. So the Jyotir Lingam, each sign has a Jyotir Lingam and that Jyotir Lingam represents to that Purush and Prakriti that's coming together to create that energetic vibration of the universe. Just like the Atma in your body is coming together to create the energetic vibration that is you. The Jyotir Lingam is that level of the sign. Okay? So when we worship the Jyotir Lingam of a sign, and let's see, on the other page here, there's a list of the Jyotir Lingams. For Aries, it's Rameshwar. For Taurus, it's Somanatha. For Gemini, it's Nageshwar. And if you open the page, so it's red. Um, now, the way the Jyotir Lingam is, anybody, you probably know. You got How do you worship a Shiva Lingam? You bathe it. And you, and you say, Om Namah Shivaya. That's right. You bathe it, you pour water on it. And you say, Om Namah Shivaya. What's the water? Why are you pouring water on it? The water pouring over it represents the, um, 
Well, one is kind of like a unifying principle, and uh, it kind of represents the spirit. It's, that's how I envision it. You're, you're kind of giving life-giving water, like a, it's like a ganga flowing over your head kind of a deal. Is that Why is our atma take embodiment in the physical plane? Because we got karma. Because we got karmas that we need to purify. Oh, so water's purifying. Water's mm -hmm. purifying. Oh. So we mm -hmm. pour the water over the atma, and at one level it's purifying and rejuvenating this external form of the Shiva Lingam. One thing that Sanjay teaches, he doesn't say any elaborate prayers before he eats. He takes a glass of water, and he holds it up, and he imagines his Jyotir Lingam. He imagines his atma in his heart. And he takes the water saying, Om Namah Shivaya, and, 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 has the, and offers that first sip of water over his atma. Oh. And then he eats his food. That's the only prayer. Mm. You are the Jyoti Lingam. The, Jyoti, the, the atma is the, the, the lingam. The, the yoni is your body. You, you use uh, milk instead of water. Yeah, we use all the five substances. I'm um, just the basic... The basic every day is water. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the way to, to worship first this Atma inside. Then you have this, this Jyotir Lingam outside that's representing, it's representing all the dimensions that we just talked about. It's representing the Atma in the body. It's representing the signs that are being created by the sun and the moon. And it's also representing the fact that we are all pure consciousness existing in physical form. And it's purifying that pure consciousness. Okay? So it's, it's when you offer water to the Shiva Lingam, it's working on all those levels. So now, how do we worship a Jyotir Lingam, specifically? Same way you worship a Lingam, except you add a little bit extra onto the mantra. Instead of just Om Namah Shivaya, we take the name of the Jyotir Lingam based on the sign. So let's say it's um, Ramesh, Rameshwara. It's Om Namah Shivaya, Namo, Rameshwara Aya. Aya means two. Namo means praises. So it's praises to Shiva, or I like to translate it as praises to that which removes tamas. Praises to that which removes darkness. Namo Rameshwaraya, praises to the that aspect of, of Shiva, that aspect of Jyotir Lingam, that aspect of Atma. Rameshwar. Now, the Jyotir Lingam of a sign purifies that sign. Just like water over a lingam purifies the atma. It purifies the essence of the sign and allows the highest essence of that sign to come out and give you results. So we work with the adityas when we want more from the sign. We work with the jyotir lingam when we want the purity and the essence of the sign. We want the sattva of the sign. Okay, two different reasons. So depending what we want from the sign, there's also um, just plain Rashi mantra, which make the sign friendly. But different ways, different things we're asking of the sign. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so if we wanted to start practicing a Jyotir Linga mantra, which one would we do? What's the first basic mantra of the Jyotir Lingam that we want to worship? What shows our Atma? The sun and the Atma Shanti. The sun. The sun shows our Atma? The sun or Atma Kantha shows Atma. Which one? Huh? Atma Kantha. Why Atma Kantha? That's your individual soul. Mm -hmm. You missed that last week, Atma Karaka, yeah? Yeah, but I got the Atma part. Okay. <laughs> the sun is Sarvatma. 
Sun is general significator of soul. Oh, it's everybody's atma. It's everybody's atma. It's that part of atma in you that's the same as in everyone else. The atma karka is the seed of ahamkara. It's the seed of your individual soul. What's making you think that your soul is separate from the all souls? So, we want to worship the Jyotir Lingam relating to the Atma Karaka. Now, that's a planet, though, not a sign, right? So, how do we connect it to a sign? So how do we find out which lingam to worship? We look at the avatars and we take the avatar's advice. So when Ram incarnated, what was Ram an incarnation of? The sun. Which Jyotir Lingam did Ram establish? Rameshwar. Rameshwar is connected to what sign? Aries. Which, what connection does that have to the sun? Exaltation. It's the exaltation of the sun. But not all signs have an exaltation sign. So Rama established Rameshwar Jyotir Lingam before he went to Lanka. He worked, he purified his atma, and then he went to battle. He had to make sure that there weren't any sins that were like making him, setting him up to lose. He had to purify his bad karma. And then the curse of him losing his wife and wandering in the jungle was done. Krishna was an incarnation of the moon. Anybody know which Jyotir Lingam Krishna established? Huh? Huh? Somnath Jyotir Lingam was established by Krishna. What sign is it connected to? Which, how's that relate to the moon? Okay. So every planet has an exaltation, right? So if we can take our Atmakarika planet and worship its exaltation, What's your, what's your, you, you don't know your office. Let's see. Yours is Sun, so Rameshwar, simple. Atmakarika? Jupiter. Jupiter. Exaltation of Jupiter is what? Cancer. Cancer, which is, which Jyotir Lingam? Om, Om Kareshwar. So, Om Namo Shivaya, Namo Om Kareshwar. Mm. So even if you offer water only once over the Shiva Lingam, if you just add that simple extra part of the mantra, mm. it, helps to ensure that that water is purifying your soul, your atma karaka, your atma. It's helping to, it's, it's asking that form of Shiva, that form of the Jyotir, that of the, of the light, Lingam, to, to burn up and, and cleanse you of your karma. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Do we need to go through a little bit more? What's your atma karaka? Mercury. Mercury. Where's, so which one is, is this? Okay. Got some studying to do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Is it in the morning? The when you all for water over the lingam. The time of day doesn't come in. Cause Generally in the morning and your sadhana is done, but it depends whenever you're worshiping the Jyotir Lingam. Depends whether you're doing it for a remedy or not, because this is used in other... You see, I'm teaching you just this little technique right now, but later you'll get terrible diseases that people have where this will be a cure that will totally remove yeah. suffering and all kinds of diseases and all kinds of strange situations you'll be able to fix with this remedy. Mm. This is just, I'm giving you just a little basic um, way, an example to use it so that you can have a concept of it so that when it comes time to use it in other ways, you already know how to use it. Asmakarika is what? Rahu. Rahu. Hmm. So what's your what's your Jyotir Linga mantra? Okay. We ready yet, Mina? Okay, what's the mantra? I'm the perfect guy. Yeah. 
This is for this is your basic Jyotir Linga mantra. When a planet is Marnakarka Stana or suffering disease, then then you do the Jyotir Lingam Om Namah Shivaya um Rameshwaya Hong Jung Sa. Or if there's a certain affliction, it's Hong Hong Sa. Like you, so there's various variations depending on the problem. So this is the basic Jyotir Linga mantra. Could you just bring in here? Yeah. It's the Bija of Mirtanjaya Mantra. I'd wanted to do houses too today. Well, we'll have to wait till next week, huh? No, we can just have dinner and keep going. Keep going? <laughs> <laughs> All night. It's a marathon. Okay. I'm going to teach, I'll teach one little, I want to teach just one more aspect and then. Um, I'm going to teach a few advanced techniques for the more advanced students here. And if you're a beginner and you want to leave, you're welcome to leave at that point because it'll probably be a little above. If you want to stay and just catch it, you're welcome to stay and, and try and follow because you might be able to. But just for our um, basic, um, the one last basic that we're going to do. So we all see that we have a, a, a one chart, right? And if you look at your... your um, handout you have multiple charts there okay so what happens is if we look if you pull out that page of your Varga charts that we filled out with all the different graphs did anybody finish their D3 yeah, the <laughs> so just, I just want to do an example so we can see how this lines up. Can you get the other side of the screen? Okay. So, what is your ascendant in, in the D3? This is our house's chart, right? So she just did that calculation of the different signs. Now her ascendant is in Capricorn. Capricorn is what number? Ten. Two advanced students. This is a beginner's question. Let them get it. So it's ten. So what I do is I put ten there, and I keep going around. Eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Okay. So where's your son? Libra. Libra. So I go down, sun. Your moon. Libra. Keep going. Tell me, lead off Mars. Mars, Scorpio. Mars is in Scorpio. Mercury in Virgo. Mercury is in Virgo. Jupiter also in Virgo. Venus in Sag. Venus is in Sag. Saturn in Leo. Saturn Rah is in Leo. Rahu Pisces. Rahu is in Pisces. Okay. So we see how just based on her lugna, we made the whole chart. Totally separate than everything else. Let's do one more person, just so we can... Anybody else finish up that um, D3? Huh? I want to be, huh? Yeah, what's your, the ascendant? Uh, uh, Capricorn. Capricorn. Again, same? Let's, let's, yeah. Yeah. What do you, did you, did you do the D7? Did you get the D7? Yeah. What else, did you do D4? No, D3. D3. I just want to do a different than Capricorn. Okay. Somebody have something different than Capricorn? Oh, oh, uh, uh, it's going to fall off the same. Aries. Aries. So hers is Aries. Yeah, so Aries is there. Because of that lugna, yeah. everything else is based on it. Yeah. Moon in Rattle at all. 
Notice I'm doing the planets in red and the sign in black. That's on purpose. So you should have a black pen and a red pen next class, okay? What's what? Give me sun and moon. Sun, Leo, moon, Pisces. Sun, Leo, moon, Pisces. Mm-hmm. Mars, Sag. Mercury, Leo. Mercury, Leo. Jupiter, Libra. Venus, Cancer. Saturn, Aquarius. Rahu, Cancer. Sisters, Capricorn. Okay, now what's your natal chart? Leo. Leo. So her natal chart's Leo. It's totally different than this. But you see how based on that lugma, in that chart, it sets up the whole chart. Totally different chart. This chart, this is your what, your D? Three. D3. So this chart is for brothers and sisters. Her brothers and sisters. We don't read this chart for her, we read it for her brothers and sisters. What's her relationship to the brothers and sisters? In the same way, when we make the D4 chart like this, we look at that chart for what's your property like? What's your luck like? We make the D7 chart, we put whatever the D7 lugma is right here, and then we write all the rest around here and then fill in the planets. So there's 36 signs, but it still looks like this. Navamsha has how many signs? 108. It still looks like this, okay? So even though we break it down into multiple signs, it still ends up looking like this. So it's a lot more formal than the other. It's deeper, it's a subtler vibration. So that was it for the beginners. If you wanna stay for a little more, you're welcome to.